I was in my office uh, catching up with some work, doing some charts, uh, paying bills and so on. I had just five minutes got out my truck and I, the weather didn't look right. At about 9, 9, 10, 9, 15 in the evening when uh, I started hearing some loud noises and winds, and it sounded almost like a freight train was coming. So when I get in the house, I'm just saying a prayer, because something ain't right. It kept on getting louder, and oh no, a tornado's coming. I knew it was. That's all about the train. You know, it's a power train popping. Damn. Look at all the trains. This thing was on top of our head, and our ears went to hurt. We heard that freight train. It said, vroom, vroom. I remember Jerry saying, here you go. Hit the hall. Just was an instant explosion. Just everything, just boom, you know, like one of the boom. You could tell it was on top of us. It was chaotic. There was screaming. There was praying. My daughter got over the baby. She hovered over her. My wife got on top of her, and I was on, I, we were like hovered over each other. There was nurses hanging on to the, to the handrails because the wind was just so strong. In the house where we've been on, on this slant, on this hill, so when it started going over, the floor dropped out. My vehicle was picked up by strong winds. The power lines and the transformers and the trees went to falling, and I knew we had a problem. It came in from the south and went out the north on the east side of town, and that just cut a, a mile wide swath of, of damage. It started, I guess, uh, on Elm Avenue and moved through Reese Park, through the hospital, through Sharon Dale subdivision, Sharon Circle, out where Chick Memorial Church is, uh, Hudson Street, Oglethorpe Avenue, that area, and then went on out Highway 49 through Dogwood Hills, and, and then moved on up 49. So, you know, from a, from a Sumter County perspective, I think the total length of the tornado where it began in, in Webster County was about 28 miles long, and, you know, a mile wide. But, Probably in Sumter County, it's probably a mile wide and probably, I would guess, seven to ten miles long. The power lines were down, there was debris all over the place, uh, there was no electricity. The hospital. That would really hurt. Looks like a nuclear bomb went off. It does. It, does. it was kind of like a war zone. The landscape looks like something totally out of, I don't know, out of a nightmare. The Bible says we'll have uh, trials and tribulations, but we can overcome it just like anything else, you know. I said, as long as we put our trust in God, that's what matters. I knew something uh, horrible had happened and something extremely devastating and powerful. All the personnel were called in, medical personnel. Even though I was only five minutes away downtown, it took me over an hour to actually get here. And she said, David, it's bad, it's really bad. It was like a war zone. You could see the strobes from our fire alarm system flashing. And I have never seen anything this bad. There was pine straw and dirt and grass in these in the emergency room and in sterile areas. The shocking area was OB to see a whole wall out. I guess the vacuum that may have been created by the wind in some of our stairwells just sucked the sheetrock off the concrete. Wires, electrical wires everywhere. Um, 
a sprinkler system hanging, you know, exit signs hanging. Even a lot of window frames, not only the glass blew out, but the entire metal window frame. The patient rooms are just in, I mean, it's disastrous. Debris, glass, um, it's just destruction everywhere. I still can't believe that it really happened to the hospital that I've worked for for 10 years. You know, I'm so grateful that nobody was killed. It was just, it was just a miracle. Now, we always uh, expected that uh, any disaster in the area that we would be the receiving facility for the people injured uh, as a result of the disaster. We didn't realize that we would be a part of the disaster. It broke my heart because we're not just a hospital, we're, we're a family. You know, it, it's very emotional. You know, you, you, you cry about it and you, you just worry and, and not just for us but for the patients that need the hospital. The most important thing I want to say is thank you to all of the surrounding hospitals, ambulance services, all of the people who were there that night who evacuated us. It's because they responded to us in such urgency that we were able to get people out and get them out alive. By the time I, the radio hit it saying America hit the way, it was like lights dimming, coming on. We're sitting in the kitchen and you hear the wind pick up, wind drop, wind pick up, wind drop. Started raining, slowed down raining. And all of a sudden you hear stuff falling, like tin coming through, tin hit the ground, lost it in the ground, which we didn't have no idea what it was. I remember my window busting, glass coming inside, and we jumped. At the time, Miss Carrie Game was praying for us, so we all joined together, like praying. I'm scared, I was really scared, praying, deeply praying. And this quick noise came through, the windows shattered, the tree came in through the front living room, and we jumped. And I remember Jerry saying, here it go. I mean, it just happened too quick for me to get scared, to vision two people in my apartment. I deeply miss Jerry and Miss Carrie Gaines, because I mean, you got a best friend, your neighbor. Uh, my name is Gary Merritt. I was part of the March 1st tornado, or uh, I live right here. And uh, it was March 1st, it was something after 9 o'clock. And at that time, when the tornado hit, I heard something that sounded like a loud train or maybe a rocket or a jet motor with high-powered winds. And uh, I turned the TV on mute. I was ironing the shirt. And <clears throat> I heard something snap outside, and everything went dark. So I backed over in the living room area and turned the TV off. And that's when uh, the east side of my house blew up. <clears throat> when it started coming, coming loose, I tried to get down the floor, and the whole wall blew up. Bedrooms blew up. It sounded like a bomb said, boom. Bathroom said, boom. The floor of my house dropped out. And that's when the wind that was twirling got up on the house, and the house went up, and I went up with it. And it came over this way. I must have been about maybe about 35 feet up in the air. And the house started coming loose. The sides came off, and the roof came off, and it pushed me out there in the ditch. And when I landed, everything started landing around me. It was a tree right here on the side of the house. It felt like it was going to hit me, but it went the other way. And I was just in the ditch, just terrified, just waiting on there, all the debris to stop flying and landing. Everything was flying that way. And it was like a never-ending nightmare. We did know the bad weather was coming, but we just didn't know when. The nursery nurses had taken all the babies to their rooms, and um, I was coming out of the medication room. There was no time for a warning because it just happened so suddenly when it did happen. And that's when the, the lights flickered and our generator came on. My ears popped. And at that point, I knew that it was Yeah, there. it was like, you know, that was you, the it, instant you realized this is, something did not happen. Yeah.
there was praying. There was nurses hanging on to the to the handrails because the wind was just so strong. You think you're dying. You, you, you're worried about everybody around you dying. You know, just expecting to walk out and not see people alive. At first, you kind of feel like, oh, I didn't do enough. You know, you think yeah. of all the stuff, you feel guilty because you feel like you need to do, you should have done more. Everything's just piled up, I mean, on top of, mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't even walk through if you tried. You couldn't crawl through it if you tried. It was like a scene out of a movie. You know, it was just really surreal. It was just the flashing red light and all you could see was just destruction around you. There's only one reason that there was, n that no one was injured in that whole situation. Someone had their hand over every single human in that hospital because there's no reason some of those patients should have gotten out of those rooms alive. I'm Cynthia West. I live here at 211 North Hudson Street. We had it. Some of my coworkers was calling and saying that um, a tornado had hit Hudson Street and they was wondering if I was here. And I said, no, I'm at my mom. They said, thank God. And they said, well, Ms. West, your house is gone. I said, no. They said, your house and car is gone. I said, no, it's not. So I turned over and went on back to sleep wondering if it was really gone. So when I came here Friday morning, I couldn't do anything but break down because I was looking for my house on the end and I didn't see a house, it was just like a little box, like a little square box or something. And I was crying, not because my house was really destroyed, but I was thanking God that I wasn't home. So the only thing I could do is just cry and thank God because it's material stuff and I can always get more. Mm -hmm. But um, I was really hurt because everything was gone. But I'm standing here now and my hall was left of it. And to this, to this right here is my bedroom where, where I was, right here is the bedroom. As you can see, the window's gone. Everything is all messed up here. It's not, it's just gone. And back here is the, this was, it was the bathroom. And over here to your, to your right here, it used to be a bedroom. It's, it, when I walked in, I really couldn't even tell it was a bedroom or anything. I mean, the bed, the, the covers and everything, the TV was gone out of the window, the roof is off. Um, everything just down and out of the window. And to your right here was the dining room. And I had a little pup in there. They had been in there ever since Thursday. And when I got here, he was still in this little cage and he was still alive. Oh man, it's coming out the dining room. Mm -hmm. And back here is my den. As you can see, it was no window, no doors, no roof. Everything was just, just like this. This is the den. I mean, the roof is gone, hole in the wall, the windows all out. Furniture is all messed up here. Mm. This is the living room. It was the living area. No window. And as you can see, it was a steel rod it come through the kitchen wall, went straight through my refrigerator and out of this wall in the living room. And where the rod come from, I have no idea. This was the living room. This is the, this was the kitchen. This is why I was telling you about the iron rod that come through the window here and go through the refrigerator all the way through the wall. There's no roof on it, like I say, and everything is just, this is it. And this right here, I guess it's blew through the, through the roof. I don't know where it come from. I also have a portion of flash food sign out there in front of the, in front of the window. It come from over the flash food. This is the back door. My car is here. My car is gone. It's just, the whole right side on the passenger side, it just just shifted all the way to the driver's side on the left side here. I was renting. I didn't have no rental insurance. My sister always used to tell me about that rental insurance, but I didn't have any. But whenever I rent again, trust me, I will have rental insurance. But I did have full coverage on the car. But I just pray that, you know, everything works out. But like I said, I see I have my life, health, and strength. Yeah, sure do.